Hey, Bikeaholics, Ryan Erlocker here, lawbindingbiker.com. Thanks for checking back in today's video. Uh, we've got two Harley, these are Harley Davidson parts, and uh, we're gonna, we're kind of changing this bike out, doing a bunch of black stuff to it. In today's video specifically, we're gonna change out the transmission side cover right here, as you can see, and we're also got the transmission top cover, which sits right up here. Don't forget, we got a whole bunch of other videos, uh, did a whole bunch of other uh, primary and some black tail lights and stuff. Just check the YouTube channel and search for those. But anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and get wrenching, huh? All right, and so what Chewy's working on first is we're gonna get this floorboard out of the way because we gotta get the exhaust out of the way too so we can access all the bolts that we need. That's just a 5 16 Allen that he's working with there and a 9 16 wrench on the back. Just your front floorboard support. Of course, we're going to remove front and back. All right, he's just removing that back floorboard support now. Same 5 16 Allen. And there we go, that gets our floorboard up out of the way. All right, and you can see we're just working on getting rid of the heat shields. We're going to have to take the heat shields off here because we're eventually we're gonna have to get this exhaust out of the way and we can't get up and get the header bolts where they bolt onto the headers with this heat shield in the way. So you're just using a nut driver. These clamps are all the way around, of course, different areas on heat shields, depending on what kind of, this is a, a different exhaust, of course, it's not stock. So just find your clamps and get, get them all loose and uh, undone so we can do the heat shields. He's gonna move down to another one underneath there. All right, and with that, he's got both those loose. I can back this front header heat shield off anyways. All right, as you can see, it's working on the back header heat shield now. Same thing, just clamps. All right, and with those clamps removed, you can get that heat shield off. Now we'll have access with these headers, as you can see, to get up in there and uh, get at these bolts and stuff. All right, we're just getting rid of the saddlebags now, both sides, two-quarter turn pins of course get those on out of your way because we're going to need to access the top of these mufflers and right on top there's some bolts there that we're going to need to get at all right with a half inch socket he's taking off both these top uh, this muffler bracket and i think i said take off both saddlebags of course we don't need to for this project we just need access to this right muffler and that's going to get things loosened up because we of course, we've got another clamp up underneath here we're going to show you in a sec. And then we'll take the header bolts uh, off up at, at the uh, motor there so we can get this exhaust all the way off and out of our way. All right, next he's putting, uh, getting this crossover basically. He's unbolting that so his exhaust crosses over underneath just because we want to separate this. Believe it or not, this is Screaming Eagle exhaust and it's using a 15 millimeter metric socket, guys, on a Harley. Yep, seeing more and more of that these days. All right, and we're gonna get the muffler off too just so the whole system's not so awkward to work with. Again, there's just a clamp there you can see he's working on. That'll allow us to get this muffler off. All right, and you can squirt a little lube up in the, you know, in the connection there. Otherwise, you kinda gotta just twist and turn a little bit and, uh, just depends how long they've been on, but you can see he's getting it there. There you go, just twist them, turn them, and yank them a little bit, but lubrication does help, especially if they've been on a long time. All right, so first we're gonna, they're half inch guys, and there's your headers, you know, header pipes right where they bolt to the motor, and there's two of them, and of course that uh, uh, ring, the flange there and all that. So he's gonna be working on this right now with his socket, getting both those out. And the other underside one, you tend to have to use a box end wrench on, but really that's up to you. Just gotta get both these backed off. All right, so sometimes on this front head uh, pipe, the underside nut, he's standing on the that side of the bike, of course. And then I can show you up in here. Sometimes it's easier to work up in there if you're uh, standing on that side of the bike and you can see what he's working on up there. And, it's hard to get a socket in there. Sometimes you just have that one. You kind of just have to use a wrench, take it on and off until you can get it backed out. And there we go. It looks like he's got it loose enough. He can get it off with his fingers. All right, Chewy's just finishing that other front header nut there, and then we can move to the back ones. All right, moving on to the back header, of course, half inch. And same thing on this one's a little easier. You can get a socket on both of them. Pretty simple get both those backed out. 
And this other one on the bottom side, of course, looks like Chewy put in a little extension on. That helps get it off a little quicker. All right, and last, everything's pretty much loose, except there is a clamp down in here, guys, or uh, it's basically a bracket, support bracket. You can see the top of it there. It's kind of a flat type top bolt. Well, and then we got to go underneath. When you go underneath, there's an actual bolt up underneath there that he's going to be working at. You can kind of see it hanging out there. All right, and so with the 9 socket, he's working on that, undoing the bottom of that clamp. The trick to this, guys, is because it's a flat type head on the top, it's going to start spinning on you. So what we're doing here, guys, this is a little trick. He's underneath, of course, and like I said, this tends to spin in there. And so a little trick to keep that down is I just put my screwdriver in and I pry up on the bottom of that house and that keeps that push down for him. I'm just using leverage so that it's not popping up and spinning on him and get that nut off the bottom. All right, and with everything loose, you just kind of got to manipulate this a little bit. All right, another little trick just takes time sometimes, just depends how long it's been on, but he's just working on that back one. Just work with a screwdriver and get those little metal flanges. You can see this front one. We've popped it loose from the studs. You can get a screwdriver, that's what he's doing. Just give us a little extra ease of getting this these headers off. And now you can see we've got those flanges down around the pipes, completely off basically. And that's gonna help free everything up as you can see. There we go, header system off. Okay, and as so you can see up in there, the front header of course, give you a, what we're looking at here. Um, you can see up in there, we're going to, you can reuse these gaskets if you want. Some guys think every time you take your headers off, you got to put a new gasket. You certainly could. They're those kind of crush type gaskets. So that is crushed up in there real good. And we're just going to go ahead and reuse it this time. But certainly if you're doing this project and, or, you know, the, the possibility is an exhaust leak, which you wouldn't want, but I've reused these. Um, we know this has only been used once when they were originally put on and um, again, I've reused them and had no problem. So that's what we're going to do in case you're wondering on the exhaust gasket there. So we're going to drain the transmission because this is a clutch model. If you don't have a, or a, a manual clutch, cable clutch, if you have a hydraulic clutch, then uh, which is 2014 and on, and some uh, newer or uh, pre-2014 CVO stuff. But um, if it is a cable clutch, then you're going to lose fluid. And if it's a hydraulic clutch, then this is just a cover for looks. And uh, so you won't lose any fluid. It'll be much easier to change. But we're going to have to drain it. And so we're going to go right underneath the bike. And you'll see that cutout right in there in the frame. And then you look up in there and you see that bolt up in there. It's a 5 8 That's the transmission drain plug. Don't forget we have our full, very popular Harley Davidson maintenance video, lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash 2014 Harley maintenance. Doesn't matter if it's a Dyna, Touring, Softail, we've got you covered in that video. Very detailed. Change your oil, filters, do your own services, maintenance, safety, inspection. All right, with that said, let's get this drained. All right, and so that's what Chewy's working on right now. Transmission drain plug. He's got his oil pan underneath. All right, there we go. And even though we're draining that, still when we take this cover off to replace it, we're gonna lose some oil out of there. It's just kind of gonna be a little bit messy. That's the way it goes. All right, and with a 3 16 Allen, he's just going around and loosening all these at this point around this outside transmission cover. All right, and so he's getting his last one backed out there. And again, we've got the big pan underneath because we know this is gonna drip a bit. There's no real extremely clean way to do this. It is what it is. You're always gonna lose a little bit more that way. All right, so this is your clutch housing, of course, your outside housing. We've got that off once you have that off, guys. Um, when we put this back on, we're actually gonna replace this gasket so we can get rid of that. This would not, some gaskets you can reuse and stuff we say at times, but these ones I would definitely uh, replace this gasket. All right, so what you're looking at here, get yourself a pair of snap ring pliers you see the two rings, this ring. Also notice, because it's going to come into play, is that it's kind of thicker. You see the ring is thicker, and then it tapers down as it gets towards the snap ring holes. Um, what you want to do, I'm trying to do this so I can show you guys, so bear with me. All right, once I get my snap rings in there, 
Again, it helps to have a second set of hands here, but I'm trying to do this for you guys. Is I just kind of spin it around, and what I'm trying to do is spin it around like so, so that these kind of are over here like so. And this can be a pain if you've never done it before. I've done enough of these that I've kind of got a trick. So you can see now I've got these over here, and again, I noted the different thickness in it. That's very important. And so once I have it over here, you can kind of see I've freed this side a little bit. And so what I'll do is pinch these in real good. And you can see I'm kind of spinning it at the same time. And this will go flying, so be careful. And you can see now once you get it started, it slides out. Now this is the same way. A lot of guys struggle with these because they try to put them back in like this. And they try to get the snap rings on here and they try to put it straight back in. So the way you'll want to put it back in that will save you a lot of time and gray hairs and frustrations, we'll put it back in at an angle like that and I'll show you when we do that and see how I just slid it right back up in there, guys. You can almost do it without snap rings. Really the snap rings are to get the rings so they're over here in a position, an advantageous position. So that's out. And then there's a couple ball bearings under here so be careful to, to do this right. You heard one fall out there. There's the second one. All right. And so, I don't want to drop these, so I'm just getting them out for you guys. So, there's one more ball bearing. You can see the ball bearings just go right back in this plate. They just sit there. So, I've got the three ball bearings now in my hand. Hopefully, you're enjoying the video. If you want to make sure that content and these free videos keep coming your way, there is a way you can support us. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N. The community is growing over there. We'd like to have you involved, too. Um, there's no risk over there. You can sign up for a certain level um, and pay a certain amount per piece of content with a cap. Absolutely no risk. There are some benefits over there. Um, T-shirts and a private Facebook group and some premium content. All depends on what level you sign up as. But that is a way that you can assure the content keeps coming your way. Lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Of course, if you ever want to just leave a flat donation, we do accept that too and appreciate it lawabidingbiker.com slash donate. Don't forget to check out that weekly podcast, guys. It's on fire. A ton of content we're putting out. Get involved over there. It's a Law Abiding Biker podcast. All right, let's get back into your video. And then here is your, where your clutch cable goes in. You can see it goes into the housing here. We're going to have to unscrew this in a sec. But this right here, I'm going to spin it around so you guys can see it. You can see it's just kind of a, a half shape there and it's got kind of a, a partial uh, machine circle there. It just fits in just like that. So when you turn it, then it's locked in, it won't come out. So you just kind of got to fiddle with it till that comes out. We can save that plate there. All right, and then there you go. This is your, your clutch cable. Now we can take this housing off and we're gonna get a wrench and kind of turn the housing off while we're holding this. So with the 9 16 wrench, this is the easiest way to do this, guys, is I'm just holding onto it and then I'm just turning the whole housing and it's threaded, and I'm back in the cable off of the housing, of course. And now I've got that enough, I can just hold it. All right, there we go. And that comes out like so, housing out of the way. Now note here, there is a ring here. Um, you know, just be aware of these can, this one's just a little bunged up, but it should be fine. But you could get a leak point there, so you might want to if you're doing this, get a new one of these washers or have them on hand. All right, so we got our new block cover. Um, of course, cable goes right in. Again, if you want to replace this O-ring, that's fine. Right into the housing. And then just make sure you don't cross thread this, guys. And I'm just gonna tighten this down. Okay, so this is the old housing. We do need this piece too where the ball bearing sits. So that just pops right out like so. We've got our new housing here. Of course, this little protruding piece. There's a little nice spot for it right there in the housing for you. This, of course, very simple. Just goes on the cable like that. It's got a little cutout for it. Very simple. Don't forget we've got this piece right here and I'm just flipping it over so you guys can see. It's actually going to go down because it's got the ball bearing cutouts but for video purposes. So you can see right on like so. Now we can spin it around. I'm just actually going to set it out of my way for a second. Now I'm going to get my three ball bearings. Put them right in here. Once you get those in, of course this plate goes right over the top like so. So our ball bearings are all in there. We're good to go. 
Okay, so like I told you guys, there is a sweet spot, and honestly, every time I do one of these, I have to find the sweet spot because it can be really frustrating. That's why we wanted to make this video for you. But the way is, so if you look at this right here, that little snap ring hole right there where my thumb is, if you try to do it out here and try to get it in, you're going to get frustrated. It, it just, it only bends a certain way. So the way to do that is light. See this first notch right here? I kind of aim for that and that gets it started. So if I have that there, and then of course there's a channel over here that I'm getting the ring in. And as long as I have that situated about there, and I can usually get it in just like that with my fingers. And again, the only reason we're using snap ring pliers is we want to actually now go ahead and pinch this together and rotate it up. All right, and there I turn it up to about there, and you should be good. This is all gonna hold just fine now, so good to go. We can get this housing and uh, back on here. Okay, so just cleaning this up now, because uh, we're gonna put a brand new gasket again. We wouldn't suggest trying to reuse this one. You might get some leakage. Of course, we want that held in place, so he's got a few pieces of electrical tape, no problem. And he's gonna put them up over the gasket and kind of up over the, the ledge there, so to speak, and that will hold in place. And then after we get it on, you can it's nice because you can just grab that electrical tape and yank it right out of there and it won't cause a problem. But that way we know it's aligned properly. Now we can get the housing back up there. It's gonna start lining everything back up. And then just start finger starting a few of these bolts here. And again, just getting a couple bolts in there so this thing won't fall off now and then he can go around. All right, and just in case you forgot, guys, we're just reminding you there's two different sizes. Your two short ones bolts go along the top. They go into the two top holes, and then your longer ones go around the other four holes there. So don't get those mixed up. All right, so he's got all these started, just seated. We haven't tightened any of them down, really. And now you can see that you can just grab that electrical tape that was holding the gasket, and it just pulls right out. So a little trick there. We know they're all lined up. Now we can get a wrench on these bolts. All right, so he's getting all these tight. If you want to get torque specifications, go for it. We're comfortable with it. He's going to get them tight in about another quarter turn. You're seeing he's going around. He's not, um, you wouldn't want to just go counterclockwise or clockwise. He's actually going like in a star pattern, top, then bottom, then side. Kind of do them in a sporadic order so that you get even pressure sinking that plate down. And again, don't over tighten these. You will strip them out, guys. And, uh, like we say, tighten about another quarter turn or get your torque specifications. But there you go. All right, and he's just back underneath the transmission drain plug. And he's just getting that finger started, and then we'll get a wrench on it here so we can fill the transmission back up. All right, and he's just finishing cranking that down. Tight another quarter turn or look up your torque specifications, guys, if you like that. There we go. All right, just a 3 8 Allen. He's taking off his transmission dipstick and fill hole cap there. All right, and we're just going to fill the transmission back up, and we're just using uh, AMSOIL 2050. We put synthetic in all three holes, engine, primary, and transmission. That's how we roll around here, and we like the AMSOIL products. And so it's calling for one quart. Check the specifications on your bike. It may be different depending on the year. Don't forget, guys, if you want to get our full maintenance and safety inspection and all that, uh, you can do it right in your shop or garage. Right at home, guys, on the kickstand if you need to. Um, save yourself a ton of money. The links are in the description below if you want to check that video out. Very, very popular video. Again, it works for Dynas and Touring and Softails. We've got multiple video files in there. Doesn't matter which one. Um, it will get you covered so that you can start doing your own routine maintenance and oil changes. All right. Just putting his uh, dipstick transmission cap back on with that Allen and be good to go, of course. Run your bike a little bit and then uh, double check with your dipstick. Make sure you're topped off. All right, and so he's working on the top transmission cover now. He's going to put that a black one on there too. And it's a 3 16 Allen and there's just a bunch of bolts around. Some are easy to get to than others. For these ones, he can use a socket, an Allen on a socket, of course. But the other ones, probably going to have to use like an L-type Allen wrench. We'll get to that because they're kind of blocked by the motor a little bit. And so like we say, most of them come out with that nice socket and alum, but these ones, because of the motor and the slant of it, you can see he's having to use an Allen wrench, just one of those L-shaped cheap Allen wrenches, and just a turn at a time. And he's going to have to do those for those front two, you can see there. That's just the way it goes. All right, these you see he's got a screwdriver and a little hammer. These get sealed on top, so that's an easy way to kind of pop, pop them there. 
And yes, you can see there is a gasket on there. Again, this is a gasket we would just suggest replacing and we purchased a new one from Hardy Davidson. So we're gonna put a new gasket on and get the new black cover on here. All right, so the top of that off and you can see him move his shifter there if you've ever wondered. That's kind of what is over on the left side of that. So anyways, there you go, we're gonna get the new one on. All right, and he's just putting his new black cover up there and uh, he got the new gasket on there, of course. You can see he's just going around making sure his gasket's lined up and he's just finger starting all these. And we'll kind of, as usual, we'll, uh, you wouldn't want to just go around. You kind of want to go back and forth in a star pattern as you're tightening these and stuff, guys. We'll get them all basically seated and then we'll crank them down and we'll kind of go again in a star pattern so we're not just going clockwise or counterclockwise. You kind of want to tighten the whole thing down evenly. All right, and he's just uh, finishing up there. If you want to get your torque specs, go for it. We're going tight in another quarter turn. Not a huge deal. He's just going around doing that right now on that top cover. All right, guys, there you go. New uh, outer transmission cover, blacked out like that. Of course, we got to get the exhaust back on. And then we also did the top transmission cover in black. So there you go. If you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, you are really missing out. We have a ton of videos in the works for you guys. So get subscribed. Also sign up for the free email club, lawabidingbiker.com slash email club. We will shoot you an email when we come out with new free videos. Also, do not forget to check out that weekly podcast. It's the Law Abiding Biker Podcast. It's heard worldwide. All right, peace out.